dynamic, dominant, durable. He is a two-time Stanley Cup champion, 13-time NHL All-Star, five-time Art Ross Trophy winner and Hart Trophy winner. His playing career has spanned for 33 years and is still going. A national hero. The epitome of longevity. He's the ageless wonder. Jagermeister. Number 68, Yermir Yager. Yager was born on February 15, 1972 in Kladno, Czechoslovakia. Dad was a mine administrator and mom raised Yaramir and his older sister on the family farm. Yager started skating around the age of three and he practiced a lot, taking 300 shots a day to improve his accuracy and doing a thousand squats a day to improve his strength. His dad had also played hockey and even though his career never materialized, he knew what it would take for his son to succeed. Their house was 10 kilometers away from their farm, so every day Yager had to run there, work all day, and then run back. The great outdoors served as Yager's training facility, and it didn't take long for him to get faster and stronger. Yager loved hockey, and at the age of 12 he was playing against boys 5 or 6 years older than him. After playing for Kladno's under-18 and under-20 teams for 4 years, he was promoted to their senior team at the age of 15. Yager dreamt of playing in the NHL, replicating his idol Mario Lemieux who he saw play in the 1985 World Championships in Prague. As fate would have it, their paths would eventually cross again on the other side of the world soon enough. Back then, Czechoslovakia was a part of the Soviet Union, and players weren't allowed to play in North America. If Yager wanted to carve out a career in the NHL, he would have had to defect, and he was fully prepared to. Fortunately, starting in 1989, with the fall of communism throughout Europe, Czechoslovakia split peacefully into what we now know as Czech Republic and Slovakia. Yager now had his government's blessing to play in the NHL, and in the 1990 NHL entry draft, he was selected with the fifth overall pick by the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yager began his NHL career with the stacked Penguins team that iced hockey legends such as Paul Coffey, Ron Francis, Kevin Stevens, and Brian Trottier. Most importantly, Yager got to play with his idol, Mario Lemieux, and it was destiny that brought Yager under Lemieux's wing. If you scramble Yager's first name, Yuramir, it spells out Mario Jr. It was Lemieux who showed him the ropes of being an everyday NHL player, and it was Lemieux who taught him how to use his body and mind as one to dictate the flow of the game. Yager's speed, stick handling, and reach meant he could skate past defensemen as if they weren't there, and he would later be known as the best one-on-one -on -one player in the league. Yager's career was off to a flying start, as he registered 27 goals and 30 assists as a rookie. In the playoffs that year, Yager and the Penguins defeated the New Jersey Devils, Washington Capitals, and Boston Bruins to reach the Stanley Cup Finals. Facing the Minnesota North Stars, the Penguins would triumph in six games to win the first Stanley Cup in franchise history. Yager improved his numbers in his second season, scoring 32 goals and 37 assists. But it was during the playoffs when he really made its mark. The Penguins would defeat the Washington Capitals for a second year in a row in seven games, and Yager would score the series winner in the second round against the New York Rangers as they won in six games. In the conference finals, the Penguins would sweep the Boston Bruins as Yager dominated the series. The Penguins would sweep the Chicago Blackhawks as well to win the Stanley Cup for the second year in a row. The next few seasons saw Yager develop into one of the game's premier offensive players. Due to Mario Lemieux's nagging health problems, Yager's had to put the team on his back, and in the 95-96 season, he posted a mouth-watering 62 goals 87 assists for 149 points. He would reach the 100 point mark another three times over the course of his time with the Penguins. Yager chose to wear the number 68 to commemorate his grandfather, who passed away during the Prague Spring in 1968, when Soviet tanks rolled in to squash a rebellion. His grandmother would tell him stories of how brutal the Soviet Union were, 
seizing their ancestral farmland and jailing his grandfather when he refused to work there for free. The number 68 on his back signified his allegiance and what he was willing to do for his nation. And in the 1998 Olympic Games in Nagano, it was Yager who got a little vengeance. Czech Republic had assembled a team that included established NHL players such as Martin Ruchinsky, Robert Reichel, Martin Straka, and Robert Lang to name a few. In particular, they had the world's finest goalie, Dominic Hasek. For a nation that had gone through so much, the time was now. During the round robin, Czech Republic beat Finland 3-0, then Kazakhstan 8-2, but lost to Russia 2-1 as they finished second in the group. In the quarterfinals, Czech Republic went in as underdogs but defeated the United States with a definitive 4-1 win. In the semis against the powerhouse Canadians, the game was tied at 1 as it went to a shootout, but the Czechs prevailed to send their nation into utter hysteria. The gold medal game was to be played against the Russians and with so much history between the two, this one was personal for Yager. Tied at zero midway in the third period, it was Peter Svoboda who scored the decisive goal and Czech Republic had struck gold. For a nation that had only declared its independence five years prior, this victory meant a lot more. Somewhere in the heavens, Yager's grandfather must be smiling. After the 2000-2001 season in which Yager scored 52 goals and 69 assists for 121 points, the Penguins knew they couldn't afford him in his upcoming contract, so they traded him to the Washington Capitals for three players who never really made a dent in the NHL. The Capitals signed Yager to a seven-year contract worth a whopping $11 million per year, but he did not live up to these expectations as the Capitals missed the playoffs. As the underwhelming results continued, the Capitals decided to rebuild their team after the second year of Yager's contract. In 2004, he was traded to the New York Rangers for Anson Carter with $4 million per year retained by the Capitals. Yager's four-year stay with the Rangers saw him reach career milestones like 1,500 points and 600 goals. He would lead the Rangers to the playoffs multiple times, but he could not find the success from earlier on in his career. In 2008, Yager announced his three-year contract with Avangard Omsk seeing out his distinguished career in the KHL. Or so we thought. Three years later, he made a return to the NHL, becoming a mercenary, as he went on to play for the Philadelphia Flyers, Dallas Stars, Boston Bruins, New Jersey Devils, Florida Panthers, and Calgary Flames over the next seven seasons. And in 2018, he was put on waivers, signaling the end to his distinguished career. Or so we thought. Yager ended up going back to the Czech Republic to join HC Kladno, his hometown team that he played for 30 years prior. He is the co-owner of the team and he currently plays in all their home games. Yaramir Yager is a living legend. He has thrived in the toughest hockey league in the world for three decades and he has really had to change with the times. Starting out his career as a speedy, shifty player who will beat you one-on-one, -on -one, he had to adapt his game. As he lost his foot speed, he started using his 6 foot 3, 230 pound frame a little bit more in a cycle game. It's difficult to be a top performer in the NHL, but it's even more difficult to do it consistently. Yager ranks third all time in goals with 766. He's fifth all time in assists with 1,155. And he's second all time in points with 1921 only behind the great one himself. Yager grew up in an impoverished nation and he really had to work hard to get to where he is. His training regimen included helping out his family in the farm and upon realizing his speed was not up to par, he trained extra hard to improve. This standard he has set has followed him throughout his career and even to this day. It's not a coincidence he's still playing professional hockey at the age of 49. He's had to take care of his body, and this habit started when he was young. As we end our story, I invite you to learn a lesson from Yager. When you find your passion, don't wait till tomorrow. Start today. Don't expect to find success right away, but rather you should work on it little by little. 
By working hard and challenging himself, Yager was able to realize his dream, and with the same attitude, so can you. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you soon.